this is the latest episode in my, I suppose, tactical analysis of the preseason so far from all the training drills we've seen from the system that we've seen in action in the first couple of games. And this third one here, I want to focus on what I would consider maybe not the first place you'd look for for changes in Manchester United's system under Eric Ten Hag, but a place that I think is crucial. Maybe the secret weapons of the Ten Hag system. It's not particularly secret. I'm talking about it here. City have done it already. Liverpool have done it, but it's the fullbacks. And Tyrell Malasia and Diogo Delo's performance against Crystal Palace has given us a real glimpse, a proper glimpse of what we can expect this season. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. Because I will do more of these and you have, you, you've been enjoying them, so I'm doing more. But look, we can all wax lyrical about how Manchester United have played in the first few games. Ten Hag as the, the tough taskmaster, the drill master, making sure everyone meets his massive, massive demands. The players are doing it. And that performance against Crystal Palace, again, uh, caveat here to begin with, is pre-season. No one's getting carried away with it. But I'm not focusing on the results. I'm focusing on the patterns of play and the build-up that I can see that are so different to last season that we're going to take through into the Premier League season. And of course, you can wax lyrical, as I said, about Anthony Martial getting his third goal. Is it third or fourth? I think third goal in three games. Rashford getting his second. Jaden Sancho, another great performance, another great goal. But it's two players I really want to focus on. And that's Tyrell Malasia. And that's Diogo Delo. And in particular, I suppose, Tyrell Malasia. I mean, we all felt that he could be a... We were all excited about the signing of him. No one knew whether or not Luke Shaw was going to hold his position as our starting choice left back. But I tell you what, that game and that performance and the overall performance against Crystal Palace and the fact that he plays 70 minutes as well might be a bit of a hint as towards what's coming. Now, I'm going to take a quick look at the game. And of course, the first part you've got, you've got to start is, is Man United's first goal. The first goal here, Tyrell Malasia on his weaker foot, well, it is his weaker foot, on the right foot with a little cross over there to Diogo Delo, who takes one touchdown, moves on to his weaker foot on his left, fires it back across here for Anthony Martial, 1-0. It was a fantastic goal, and I honestly cannot tell you the last time I saw a goal from Manchester United that included both of our fullbacks directly inside in like that. And that's due to uh, aggressive attacking positioning. But that's not particularly what I'm focusing on here when I talk about fullback revolution. Because that's kind of what you want your fullbacks to do in the modern game. In the modern game, I'd probably argue that the fullback is the most difficult, most physically intense position because you've got to be up there to help the attack. And at the same time, you cannot afford to be out of position. So your engine's got to be really, really big. And as I said, I think the way that Tyrell Malasia played in that game, the way that Diogo Delot has been playing this preseason, it bodes well for both of their chances next season. But this is kind of what I mean. When I talk about the fullback revolution, we talk about inverted fullbacks. Now, inverted fullbacks, if you look here at... Um, Tyron Malasia's position. I go full screen there. You can see Rashford's holding the width. It's something that we've seen quite a lot in the first few games so far. And no doubt we will see quite a lot as well. The reason that's important is because it allows Manchester United to have better options to play through the press. And I'm going to go to the tactical board and explain that in a bit more detail here. But if you then take a look at this, for example, and you see, look, obviously the ball's over on the right-hand side, so naturally the team drifts over to make the pitch smaller. But look at Tyrell Malasia's starting position there. Very central, leaving a lot of space in there behind because he knows he's got the recovery pace to cover that if it becomes an issue. But what I mean here by inverted fullbacks, let's head over to the tactics board and explain why that is such a significant role inside this new system that's getting built here. Now, obviously, we've got a bit of a higher line. That makes the pitch smaller. But the reason that this inverted fullback is so important is that like, if we advance the players up here, right? We see Manchester... Oh, for goodness sake, I hate when the circles come away. There we go. We see Manchester United moving up the pitch here. What, what I've seen quite a lot is Malasia moving inside there. If I move Fred a little bit further back, because he was kind of holding back, wasn't he? Yesterday, it was more like Bruno and McTominay holding those positions. But a lot of the time, we've seen Malasia moving inward. And the reason, this is probably not the best tactical example of it. It, it really isn't. But you can see, you, you'll see him occupying these spaces here, all over the pitch, all over that area. And that gives Manchester United an extra body when it comes to breaking down a low block, which has been such 
an Achilles heel of ours for so long. And that's what I mean about why I've been so impressed about the performances of him so far. It's almost like Eric Ten Hag knows the sort of player he is, right? And knows exactly what he's getting. And that's precisely why he signed him. But when it comes to being a modern day fullback, it isn't just about going here, going down the wing, providing the overlap. It's not as simple as that. And it's not as simple as going back and covering your own position as well. That inverted fullback not only gives you an extra body, if we go back here, it not only gives you an extra body to break down the press here, for example, it also allows you to stay a little bit more central so that when, if Manchester United were pressing high up the pitch here, uh, say, say we're trying to press on the edge of the box there, I can't be asked to move all the players individually in the tactics board. I suppose I will, actually. Say, say, look, say Manchester United were doing this, right? We're pressing on the edge of the box. We're doing as much as we could much as we can, Bruno comes up, Fred comes up, and Madisir, instead of, I suppose, being a natural overlapping fullback at that point, is kind of holding back behind Rashford. It means that when the ball gets broken through there, we've got an extra man who's a little bit more central, not just hugging the wing, and that gives us a bit more protection against the press if the press is broken. It's almost like shutting the door behind yourself when you go for the press, be aggressive going forward. And he's done that Better than I've seen Luke Shaw do that. For sure. L Luke Shaw is, when he goes forward, he plays well. It's all about the overlaps. It's all about going forward. But what Eric Ten Hag wants and needs from this team is that press and that press to work really, really well, high up the pitch and properly. It's created all the chances for us. And look, this isn't, as I say, it's the reason that we, we've not seen it at Manchester United for so long, really, is because of the players that we have. They're not naturally inclined to be doing that sort of tactic, to be operating in these sorts of positions, to be operating as an inverted fullback. As far as anyone concerned, now, that's Luke Shaw being out of position, but it's not. That's Malasia moving inwards to give another option to the players going forward. And if you look at, at, at what's happened in the Premier League, the inverted fullback is something that I believe that Pep Guardiola sort of created himself. Because it makes that press so hard to break. Because it's like, how the fuck have you got an extra player there? Now, obviously the caveat to that is if you, if you were to play that and Malasia was to tuck inside and Man United were to get hit on a counter-attack, for example, that's where those balls over the top are going to cause issue. But that's why you sign players that have pace. Like Cancelo at City. Obviously Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Trent Alexander-Arnold at Liverpool. Players with pace who can cover that space in behind. And that's why, for me, this is clearly a big fundamental of what I've seen in the first three games. Eric Ten Hag wants his fullbacks to get high to operate, but he also wants them to tuck inside sometimes. Not all the time. It's about having that unpredictability in, a, in attack. Sometimes they'll tuck inside. Sometimes they'll go out on the overlap. And if a defender can't, doesn't know what the fullbacks are going to do, then he can't exactly mark them, can he? But I've been really, really impressed with how I've seen the fundamentals of that coming I mean, earlier than I thought. And I'll be honest, like in a, in a dream scenario, we would have been able to sign brand new fullbacks in both positions. We've signed one in Tyrone Malasia, and you can see the difference straight away. I didn't know whether Luke Shaw will be our starting fullback at the beginning of the season. But the way he's playing, the way he's played so far in his first couple of games, and the fact that he's, he seems to be fitting in that naturally a little bit more. Playing that higher line, yes. I mean, Luke Shaw's okay at that as well. But at the same time, also being able to tuck inside when he needs to. Because he did that a lot of final. It's almost like kind of makes himself an extra, an extra central midfielder. When Manchester United are in possession going forward, and also out of possession sometimes as well, depending on the starting position. But it just makes the whole concept of the press easier. It makes possession easier. It makes breaking a low block easier because you have an extra outlet. The reason sometimes a low block can be so easy, tough for United to, to, to break through is because we just kind of aimlessly and without intensity passed it sideways like that. Oh, there's no space over here. All right, let's go back. Let's go back. That's what we did under Solskjaer a lot. That's what we did under Rannick a lot. But it's changing under Eric Ten Hag. And for me, what I've seen so far, this is a fundamental part of it, the fullbacks and how sometimes they're inverting and giving an extra body in the middle that's allowing United to not only press better, press more intensely 
Give an extra option, beat the lower block, and also, if that press does get beaten, McTominay misses a tackle. Farrell's in a more central position to be able to put his foot in and help in that sense. And he's got the pace to cover that space in behind if he does get exposed. That's what modern-day fullbacks do, what our modern our fullbacks haven't done for a long time. But for me, it's, I think it's quite fundamental that I've seen so far in these, in these games, and I want to speak to you about it. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Hope you enjoy it. This video, just like you've enjoyed all the rest of them, if there's any other ideas you'd like me to cover, make sure you leave them in the comments. And subscribe to United People's TV if you're new, but like what I'm seeing with the fullbacks, for sure. And it, technically, it's like a massive... It's not revolution overall in football, but it's a revolution for Man United and what we've seen from our fullbacks for a long, long time.